How's it going, everyone? It's Sam. I want to talk to you about what the Fed just did and how they screwed up. Now, the market is actually up right now. We actually saw a big drop after the Fed announced how much they're going to raise rates. And we did what we typically do, which is there's a fake out to the opposite edge or the opposite uh, direction of where the market's actually going to go. And then we spiked up. Now, the first part of this video I filmed after the announcement, but then the second part uh, is filmed or part of it is filmed after Jerome Powell spoke. And we're going to talk about some of the questions that he answered, but I also want to talk about why the market turned around after digesting more information. Now, I do want to thank True PNL, which we'll talk about halfway through the video. There are timestamps as well if you want to skip around. But I'm going to try to keep this nice and short. We're going to talk about the Fed first, but then we're going to talk about some interesting things in the market as well after that. So, as I said, the market moved dramatically. The DXY is up today. We have Bitcoin dropping really quickly. Now, of course, we have to see what Jerome Powell says after this. This is going to be probably the most important thing is to see what he actually says, whether he sounds dovish or hawkish. But part of that doesn't really matter too much anymore because of what the Fed just came out with. So we knew that they were going to probably raise by 75 basis points. There's an 85% chance of that. There's a 15% chance of 100 basis points. Now, typically, what we would see is a little bit of a rally when we come in with 75 basis points when we're already expecting that, but there's a possibility of being even more, uh, even more hawkish, right? We could raise by even more than that. That's what a lot of people were expecting. A lot of people were bullish going into this because there's a pretty good chance that we we're going to raise 75 basis points, and there's a slight chance that we would raise more than that. So again, that would pull up the market if some people think that we're going to do 100 and then we don't. Now, what got so many people worried and why the market, I think, is dumping off is because of this federal funds rate projection. Now, this is the median projection by the end of the year. So back in June, we were saying that it would probably be appropriate to be at 3.4%, which is slightly higher than it is now. And we're expecting that by the end of the year. Now, it got moved up to 4.4%. And they're saying in 2023, they still aren't expecting really much of a pivot. They'll just keep rates high. And they're expecting 4.6% by the end of 2023. And then slowly coming down when appropriate to under 4% in 2024, the end of 2024, which is two years away. And it's still going to be higher than we are at now. They're expecting this to come down in 2025. So what they're projecting is this longer period of high rates, which obviously hurts the market because of everything that we've talked about on the channel. If rates are high, then less people want risk assets. Now we are seeing a bit of a bottom here. Maybe it's partly because the they are uh, pricing this in now. We're expecting slightly higher rates. Now, if you are believing that inflation is going to come down pretty drastically and that unemployment is going to go up, you're expecting this pivot still because this does change. What they predict does change depending on the data coming in, right? Just like they moved up these projections, they could also move them down over the next, you know, couple months or the next three months, right? So this will be really important to watch going forward and to see what the projection is. Will we really need to raise by this much and keep it elevated for this long? Now, of course, I could always be wrong, but that's how I understand it. Now, I say that they messed up because or they effed up because they were so far off in this projection now of course they don't know the future they can't see where inflation's coming but they've done a relatively bad job so far i think of taming inflation or at least they got on it so late and they haven't really uh said exactly their plan to try to create this soft landing we know that we have to raise rates but they have no idea when unemployment's going to spike up and then they're going to have to reverse now of course they are in a difficult situation it's difficult too because the markets want one thing we want one thing as investors but consumers want a different thing right now this is still good for you <laughs> this drop in the market if you are a net buyer of stocks if you're selling crypto or stocks that's not great but if you're looking to get in at lower numbers, if you're looking to get cheaper companies, this is kind of good for you to build wealth long term. Now, I do want to thank True PL real quick, and then we'll get into some other big information in the cryptocurrency and the stock market. Before we go any further, I want to thank partner of the channel, True PL. So I've talked about how I've been buying 99% Bitcoin, at least when I am buying crypto so far, I've been buying about 99% Bitcoin. The other percent 
than buying is early stage projects. And that's what True PNL offers. They allow you to invest in early stage crypto projects. Now they've done this in the past. They have over 50,000 members and they have uh, had really good success. These are some of the ones that they have right now, like Acquirefy and Rewater. They've had average of about 10x, they say, from the all-time high ROI. And you can see some went up as high as 44x, some just a few x. You can see that they have one coming here very soon. Acquire.fi it closes, the whitelist closes on the 24th of September. Now, Acquire.fi, just for anyone that's curious, is the world's first Web3 M&A marketplace. Acquire is the first Web3 platform in the field of mergers and acquisitions that allows retail and DeFi investors to invest in crypto enterprises and intellectual properties that are up for sale. So you can see more about them underneath the video. Again, this is very high risk, high reward, just in case that wasn't clear. That's why it's a very small part of what I do, but you can use the links underneath the video to start getting these allocations here today if you want. Again, special thanks to True PNL. Now, like I said at the beginning of the video, we did see a huge change in the market. We had Bitcoin fall down a thousand points right when the announcement was made for uh, how much we were going to raise rates. And that was quite odd. Now, we had it return. It's still returning now, depending on when you're looking at this. We have all the major indices also jumping up. So what exactly happened? Well, I think, first of all, the market just realize that this is pretty much what we were expecting. The Fed didn't say anything outlandish. They were projecting possibly having to raise rates more than people were expecting, but it's always going to be dependent on what the market is doing and what uh, the job market and then also what the inflation data is. They're going to continue to raise as needed, but they didn't really say too much. They were just projecting that they're going to have to raise more in the future than we possibly maybe already thought. And remember, a lot of the market has already priced in this kind of scenario because of the fact that we actually are expecting inflation to take a while to come down uh, and we're not seeing a ton of a ton of uh, downward pressure on inflation and we're not seeing a lot of progress progress towards inflation coming down after that last CPI report. So if we do get good reports going forward, that could definitely move where the Fed is trying to uh, raise their projected rates. Now, I do want to talk too about what Jerome Powell said in his meeting or when he spoke. So a couple of things. First of all, someone asked, uh, they said, there is always a lag between when you raise rates and when you see that actually helping the economy or inflation coming down. Is there going to be some point where you assess what you've done so far and you pause rate hikes in the meantime and just see how things go? And he said that that's a possibility, but he still does not think that they're there yet. He said that they're just on the beginning end of what they would consider restrictive or what he would consider restrictive, and there's still a while to go. Now, this is me paraphrasing, just keep that in mind. Now, the next question was uh, basically that the projection for the rate of unemployment suggests recession because they're projecting it to go to about 4.4%. Does that mean that there's not going to be the soft landing? Uh, is that rise above 4% necessary to bring down inflation? Basically, will you continue to raise rates until there is high unemployment? And he said uh, it's slightly high because we're outside the historical norm, right? The That 4% plus would be slightly high, but also we're in a weird environment. First of all, job openings are really high and they could come down without major layoffs. For example, there are two openings to every one unemployment. So he thinks that, yes, uh, we could see people just not deciding to pick up those jobs, uh, but they're still out there, right? There's still a lot of job openings. Also, they are seeing inflation coming down slightly, but uh, it's also been high because of supply chain issues. So that might just be an issue going forward until some of those supply chains take care of themselves. They were expecting core PC to start coming down, but uh, we haven't quite seen that yet. Now, some people were asking towards the middle to end. Basically, 
why aren't you more restrictive or why are you this restrictive? And he basically didn't really go into it too much or saying that they thought that this would be necessary. They don't want to make any big judgments for any one data point. Like in August, we saw a bad CPI, uh, but he didn't want to make a very drastic 100 point decision because he realizes that there is a lag and sometimes these data points jump around. Now that's what's happening to the market right now, but we do have some other big news to talk about. Now, let's take a look at some other big news. First of all, Putin calls up for more troops as his war effort falters. So he recently, just yesterday, addressed the nation and talked about uh, having kind of like a soft call up or just um, uh, having more of the reserves uh, being brought up and mobilized. They're talking about calling up about 300,000 people into the military. Now, at the same time this is happening, people are getting really worried. Uh, plane tickets out of Russia are selling out after Putin announced this. Now, some people are saying that they're talking about using nuclear weapons. Some people are saying that he was just uh, kind of challenging the West for mentioning that they might use nuclear weapons. It's unsure at this point, but he obviously is trying to escalate this. This is just negative, I think, for all of the markets, uh, because as long as Russia's in this kind of uncertain time with Ukraine, the fact is energy is going to be much more expensive, and that's not good for anyone. It's not good for any company that has to use energy, which is everyone. Now, moving on to crypto, we do have some news uh, today that Bitmain, the biggest crypto miner company or Bitcoin mining company, just lowered the cost of their new miners of uh, their S19 Pro miners. These used to be $13,000, uh, maybe even more at one point. I remember, though, looking for the first time and they were $13,000. Now, what this means is basically now, if we were to have uh, the difficulty rate stay the same for a year, if Bitcoin went up to $26,000, you would be able to pretty much pay off this miner in one year. Now, of course, that depends on your energy rate, but I just used it in my local area. These typically last for five years, so uh, they'll definitely become less efficient over time because they're going to be better miners. There's going to be more difficulty, but right now, these pay themselves off pretty quick, and at least here in the U.S., of course, uh, talk to a tax professional, but here in the U.S., you can take a tax deduction on this, as I understand as well. So kind of an interesting thing to look at if you are someone that's interested in this, just something to pay attention to. Now, I think that is kind of bullish for Bitcoin because it just means that there's a higher likelihood that the difficulty will go up. There'll be more computing power in Bitcoin and more money flowing into Bitcoin to buy more miners. Now, I could always be wrong, but that makes a lot of sense to me. Now, let me know your thoughts on all this underneath the video. Of course, by the time you see this, hopefully uh, <laughs> there is some good news from the Fed, but I wanted to give you this information as quickly as possible. Thank you. Definitely check out the links to Moomoo and True PNL underneath the video. Moomoo will give you up to 15 free stocks worth up to $2,000 each. So definitely check that out. Deposit $100 to at least get some of those free stocks and you can get more if you deposit more. Thank you and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.